Dr. Batiste, we want to thank you for coming here to Keller Williams today and sharing a lot of great information to our agents and for those who are watching uh, this back after the fact, uh, we think this is going to be just really helpful for people who are dealing with nutritional stress. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Uh, we need you all out there uh, giving us our homes and, and doing what you do. It's important in the community, so I want to make sure you're healthy so we can have healthy neighborhoods. That's right. All right. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Kaiser Permanente, Mr. Dr. Batiste. Dr. Batiste, thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> uh, some heart health, some tips. When he's done, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about market trends. I really want to emphasize what's going on with Corona against the MLS so you can educate your clients better. So we'll do that the last 15-20 minutes of the, of the meeting. So hang tight. We're going to go into that, but the floor is yours. I, uh, I, forgot, I forgot to go to the ATM. I was losing money for that. Uh, it's not out there, but uh, I don't have it. Please cover broker stress, okay? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I have you. I have you. So, are we, are we on here? Okay, all right, good. So, we're going to get started. I, I, I know that you all are kind of energetic and you love kind of these lunch meetings where you have someone coming in and talk to you and you're supposed to look interested. <laughs> right, so, so you guys are going to humor me just for these next 20 minutes or so and let me know kind of that you're engaged a little bit here. So I, I, I go by the little alias Healthy Heart Doc. You know, whenever you have to describe yourself a, a nickname of some sort, there's a problem with that, but I did it nonetheless. And so that's what I do when I go around and give talks to try to put myself out of business. So as opposed to you all where you're trying to get business, I'm trying to put myself out of business. Is the key here. And so one of the things that I, I, I do when we start off is I always give medical talks and talk about disclosures. What's my financial <clears throat> responsibility or integration? And so I don't really have any finances when it comes to this, but I have to let you know that one of the main things I do is I always embrace wonderment. How many of you guys have heard of wonderment? Good, good. So wonderment is basically it's seeing the unfamiliar and the familiar. So what I mean by that is that imagine, you know, when I come home, I've been married 20 years. So when I see my wife, and all of a sudden she changes her hairstyle. So I met Tamara before, and so her hair was a little bit different. She changed her hairstyle, all of a sudden I'm seeing, the, the, uh, I'm seeing something unfamiliar in the familiar. It's like, oh, wow, she put on new shoes. Oh, her nails are a little bit different. You see something unfamiliar in the familiar. So that's what I want to encourage you as we're looking today. We're going to see the unfamiliar in the familiar. And so some days I, I kind of, I remember binging and watching TV. You know, we all get caught up in Netflix and things like that. So I started binge watching. I fell on HGTV. And I started watching HGTV and, and I get like a little ADD. I, I, I get like hyperactive. I have to search and figure out how did this company start? Or what's going on? And I fell on a channel that had yes. Fix Your Upper. And my wife started watching this every single day, and I started looking, and I said, Fixer Upper, this is a cool show. I love Fixer Upper with Chip and Joanna, even though they went off the air. Right, so I'm watching this show, and I'm getting all engaged, with, and then finding these old distressed homes. These homes, they're all beat up. You guys have seen distressed homes, right? Oh, yeah. So I didn't even know what distressed home meant at first when I started watching this show, so I started looking around and doing a little research, and what I fell upon was these distressed homes were homes where the owners were no longer able to take care of the home. These were homes where the owner not only didn't take care of the home, but maybe didn't pay the bills for the home. That now they become disrupted. They're, they're, they're dilapidated. That no longer are they have that curb appeal. No longer do they have the things that are there. And so as I looked at this distressed home and I saw that Chip and jo Joanna Gaines were, were kind of going out, out the business, I said, well, maybe I could be the next fixer-upper on HGTV. <laughs> so well, how's a cardiologist going to be a fixer-upper with distressed homes? Well, I said, well, I don't want to look at distressed homes. I want to look at distressed people. I want to be a fixer-upper of distressed people. And so say, well, people are distressed. Are they stressed? Well, absolutely. Stress is simply when our demands exceed our resources. That's what leads in part to a distressed home, but that also leads to stress in general, right? So you need to, you have a, a client you have to meet at 3 p.m., but your kids are out at 2.30. That creates stress because now <laughs> the demands are greater than your resources. 
The bills are $5,000 a month, but you're only bringing in $3,500. That creates stress in that moment. That's there. And so when our stress is equal to our demands, minds, our resources, and so we've done lots of things with the American Psychological Association, looking at where are the key stressors. We all see the same thing, politics, money, finances, our wife, our husband, our dog, or whomever it may be that's there, and we see these things, and how do I know? Because it's a major, major cause of why I see patients in clinic. Stress is powerful. Stress is a major issue that's there. It results in about 80% of doctor visits and results in $300 billion when you look at loss of work. How many of you guys have ever been stressed? <laughs> you have been stressed out there, I know. Major cause of illness and disease, but I came up with another equation. I, every day I have to go home and help my kids with math. No matter how many stents I put in, pacemakers, I go home, I'm responsible for Common Core, right? So this whole math process has got me engaged and kind of come up with my own kind of equations, my own mathematical equations. And so I believe that health is also related to stress. You see, our resiliency divided by our stress. As our stress increases on that denominator, come on, math, mathematician, who's from uh, the bank? Who, who gives the loans out? I heard, saw someone from the, perfect, so you're a mathematician, right? All right, so we know this, right? As our stress increases in that denominator, our health is gonna decrease, right? As we build our resiliency, our health is going to increase too as well. So that becomes important as we look at this process, that mirror, that mirror. Oh, there we go. So we know that, so how, how do I know that stress is related? I'm gonna go through a couple of things. Stress is definitely related. Just the perception that you're stressed. I'll never forget this, that when I was in, uh, graduated from med school, had my first day on call. This is back when they tortured docs, right? <laughs> New docs. So I was up about 40 hours, kid you not. Pager was going off incessantly. I was scared out of my mind, not knowing what to do. Calling my senior resident, he was like, handle it. I remember driving home, exhausted. And I was speaking to my sister on the phone, and she says, did you take care of such and such for mom and dad? I said, do you realize I'm an important man? <laughs> I, I have stuff I'm doing. She said, listen, you're not the only one who's stressed. I have a small baby at home. If I don't get sleep, there bad things can happen to the baby. I can get mad. In that moment, I realized stress is individual. Stress is something that you perceive. That means that that person, that barista at Starbucks, may be more stressed when that line is long than I am when someone's crashing and burning in the cath lab, where I do procedures on the heart. <clears throat> Stress is an, is an individual, a personal situation that's there. So what do we know? Well, studies have shown that when there is an increase in perceived stress, doesn't matter if your neighbor doesn't believe you're stressed or not, you believe you're stressed, increased risk of chronic disease. That when you're increased stress, <laughs> perceived stress, cancer, obey, uh, it, it's just, uh, it abounds throughout. 40% of women by the age of 40 have, have microscopic evidence of breast cancer. 50% of men by the age of 50 have microscopic evidence of prostate cancer. It's real out there. What we know too as well, we know that perceived stress and diabetes, it's real, right? What happens when you're stressed? Now, I may be stressed, you all are nice and small out there, but let's say I got stressed coming up here speaking to a new group of people, and, and, and I've given this intro that's kind of building me up and I can only go down from there, right? <laughs> and so in this moment, now as I get up, my eyes dilate, it was dilating. My mouth gets dry. My blood vessels begin to kind of crimp up as my blood pressure rises. My, 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 my liver begins to produce sugar, getting my muscles ready for, for fleeing, if you all laugh at me, or for fighting, right? That's what the whole stress cascade does. But imagine if this is persistent, perpetual, every single day that you're under this heightened sense of perceived stress, you create this diabetic state. You create this cancer-riddled environment in your body that's there. Increased risk of stroke. And here's the thing we all fear as we grow more mature years live. Fear of not knowing that we're sick. Alzheimer's disease, right? Significant things that are there, and most importantly to me, heart disease. Now for some, how many of you guys have ever heard of the broken heart syndrome? How many of you guys have ever had a broken heart? <laughs> right? So that's real. That's not fallacy. That's not a Romeo and Juliet, some little love tale type of TLC net movie network type deal. We know there is a cascade that went, and it happens more to women than to men. 
You'll have this moment where you have this intense stressor. Lost your dog, broke up with your spouse, and next thing you know, your heart shuts down. It ceases to contract any longer. And this whole stress hormone, we call it the stress-induced cardiomyopathy. It's significant. Stress is powerful. So what do we do when we're stressed? We eat. We eat. Stress spelled uh, spell backwards is desserts. It's a palindrome. <laughs> Go after it. Now, some of you out there, you're saying, I, I don't eat desserts. You don't, really? You eat your highly processed carbohydrates that your body processes as desserts. We love the stuff that's full with fat and oil and sugar, and it's stuff that makes us feel good. It makes us feel good. It's almost like a medicinal effect. You take that scoop of haagen dazs or that bite of that brownie, and all of a sudden your eyes roll back in your head. You're sitting there, right? That's what happens, and that's what you see. And so I want to present to you today that there's also another component of stress. I told you your health is tied to your resiliency divided by your stress. But there's another component to stress. There's something called nutritional stress. You see, we can either add to our resiliency or add to our stress by our choices we make on a day in, day out basis. I told you that I figured Ralph and, 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 and others would love that I come and talk to you during this holiday season as you're having all these streets around you, right? Because what we know, we know our health is tied to resiliency or our stress and our nutrition is equally tied to it. It is. This thing of nutritional stress, what happens? Well, studies have been done showing that when people ingest Oh, I'm having that nice prime rib. I'm having that rack of lamb. Oh, yes, I'm having the extra butter put on top of it because I'm changing my diet and I'm going keto. I'm going keto. Yes, I want to eat like a caveman, right? That what happens, some small things have shown is that we actually increase our stress hormones. The cortisol levels rise up is what some studies have found. Now, that compared to individuals who eat things like lentils, boring, Beans, boring. Brown rice, boring. Pendle beans, boring. Your stress cortisol level goes down in the salivary area there. Wow. And so why is that important to me? Well, I would say to show is that <coughs> individuals, when they pee out all this stress hormone, they're more likely to have heart disease. They're more likely to come in with heart attacks. The higher their hormone levels are, the higher their stress is, they're more likely to come and see me. Right? What did I see on, on Monday in the cap lab? What was Monday? What was significance of Monday? Right after, after Thanksgiving. So what did the patient say to me? He said, I said, I said, okay, tell me, sir, busy day. Busy. I was working my butt off. Sat there, I said, tell me, I said, what happened? You're doing so well. You're we walking five miles, yeah. He goes, it happened on Thanksgiving. I said, really? I said, okay. I said, what well, was it before or after the meal? <laughs> oh, it was after. <laughs> oh, the food was so good. And about an hour or two afterwards, I started getting this little bit of, oof, little stuffed. Got a little indigestion. I'm a little bit sweaty. Is it warm in here? I've been chewing a lot. My jaw's a little bit tender. But those symptoms didn't go away. Next thing you know, he's in the hospital with another heart attack in that moment. It's powerful. This thing called food, this thing called nutritional stress can affect us in ways we don't even know. Beneath our skin, beneath our level, attacking our arteries through something called oxidative stress. People always look at oxidative stress and, well, what is oxidative stress? Well, simply put, it's like when you cut that apple, that banana, and it turns brown, that's oxidation. When your car rusts, if you're back east or back south, that's oxidation, that's here. The same thing happens to your vessels. The same thing happens that promotes disease burden inside your body. What else happens when you grill the, the meat? When you fry the meat, you get something called advanced glycated end products. That's something where you kind of brown it, that Maillard reaction. We like to like nice little brown, nice little grill marks on there. We want our toast nice. All those things are a chemical reaction that occurs, this browning reaction called the Maillard reaction. The same thing happens on the body that promotes coronary disease as well as diabetes. So, you know, the, the one interesting thing we talk about is we say, well, animal's good, meat's good, it, it is, it tastes good, but it's not, it's, it's, it, it tastes good, but it's not good for you. So studies have shown that this thing called meat, this thing called animal protein, actually, what, it's, it's associated with increased death. You say, well, we all have to die sometime, I'd rather die happier than sad, right? We all said that, but what if you don't die? 
what if you just stagger? What if you become a ward of the state and now you become best friends with someone like me? And now I'm seeing you every so often and you have a, a nice little chain going behind you with some pills and repeated procedures. That's the question, is how are you going to live your life? How are you telling your story in this issue of distress? lives that we live in. We know there's an association between animal pride congestion and with heart disease. We know where's the beef? Where's the beef? It's all over. And what's happened, what's resulted? We know that there's an increased risk of stroke, double the risk of heart disease, double the risk of diabetes, increased risk of colon cancer, increased risk of prostate cancer and bladder cancer. It's crazy stuff and it sounds all just negative. It is negative, like these distressed homes like the fact that underwater uh, uh, homes and everything of that sort that are there, it's problematic. What about God? Look, I gotta get some milk. I gotta get my dairy, right? Well, here's the catcher. <laughs> they looked at women. I see a number of women here. Women, why you raise your hands? You see yeah, a lot of women here. All right, I love women. And so it says, among women, with each glass of milk consumed, the risk of dying from all causes increased by 15%. The risk of heart disease increased by 15%, and risk of cancer increased by 7%. Wow, that's crazy. From milk? From milk. The association that they found that in individuals, a nurse's health study, they track individuals and look at their consumption of dairy products, and this is what they found. They found that in those women who even had three plus uh, glasses of milk per day, compared to those with less than one, the risk of dying increased by 93%. This is obviously dying sooner since we all are going to die, right? <laughs> and men had an increased risk of, uh, of dying when consuming three or more glasses of milk per day compared to one, less than one glass. No, so milk meaning dairy, meaning cow milk, goat milk, whatever other kind of animal-based milk that you have. That's it. What about egg? The incredible ed edible egg, right? We need eggs because we don't speak in, in food in terms of food. We speak of it in terms of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. I need my protein. I gotta get my eggs and my egg whites, right? Right, I mean, so it's good for me, right? Well, the FDA actually, there was a whole big lawsuit that came out that said the egg industry had to stop from saying that they had any helpful benefits. So no longer, that's why they got went away from that. Now they can tell you, I'm gonna give you protein, which is true, but it's not gonna be helpful for you. Is the food health promoting or is it disease forming? Some studies have shown that it can increase the risk of diabetes by nearly 60%. And if you have diabetes, how many of you guys know people with diabetes? I'm not going to put anyone on blast if they have diabetes. But if you have diabetes and you're taking regular amounts of eggs, it increases your risk of, guess what? Heart disease. You can come and see me by about 15 to 20%. <clears throat> but here's the thing. It's never too late to change and change the course. That's what you all say to me when I come in and I'm looking at this new home and you're saying, listen, ah, Chip and Joanna Gaines, they're looking at that home and they say, I'm salivating. I see beauty. I mean, I did a little research on Chip and Joanna and what I saw was that, that they actually got picked up by HGTV when, before they had even, they had renovated their own house, their uh, house that they bought. And they flipped it and did it and they posted it and that's HGTV saw it, and they went ahead and said, hey, we want to see if you guys can do this on the show. All right, so that could be you all out there, right? So they, they said, now when they went in, they said, well, what's going to give the most value? So I don't know. I'm not a real, I'm not a real estate person. What's the most value when you uh, fix up a, a distress home? Kitchen. 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 All right, so kitchen's good for me to invest my money in. What else? <laughs> Bathroom's good. Anything else? Boring's good. Okay, anything else? Curb Curb appeal. Okay. So some of these are some key things that we should we should fix up first. And that's the same thing we should do when we're looking at our body and our health. We don't always look on the external. I, I need some guns, right? I gotta get my abs. I want all this stuff, right? We, we say there's certain things. Oh, what question are you asking? If your question that you're asking is how quickly can I lose weight? How can I look like I'm ready to post for Men in Fitness magazine or be up on the bikini, whatever? Uh, magazine. That's one question. If your question is, how can I stay away from Dr. Batiste? <laughs> how can I stay away from those docs up inside that all medical office building? That's a different question. You see what I mean? There's lots of ways to lose weight, lots of ways to pack on muscle, even though you don't look at me for comparison of that. There are lots of ways to do that, <laughs> right? But the key is, how can we do it for our health? We gotta build resiliency. 
We have to have a change of heart. We have to go in. And so this has been shown long before me. People have gone in. They show that, that when you adopt a food rich, and that's alive, not alive in terms of blood coursing through, but alive in terms of uh, the, the strength of the sunlight, photosynthesis, and these green leafy vegetables, and beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds, berries, and all these other rich foods. Recent article just coming out that the more fiber you eat, the more antioxidants you eat, these things inside berries and all these things, reduces your risk of cancer and heart-related events by 40%. Phenomenal. This guy named Dean Ornish, been around a few, uh, a few times, he showed that in 82% of those who had heart disease, that people like me could do nothing about, people like my colleagues could do nothing about, they were able to improve their blood flow, decrease the recurrence of heart-related events by adopting a whole food plant-based diet, by getting active, by putting down the smoke, by yes, stressing less, working on their stress. Powerful stuff that's there. What studies have shown is that when you move from eating any and everything, it's not all or none. It's just saying, I'm gonna make some better choices that you can actually, yes, you can actually lose your weight. Going from the orange bar down to the green bar is moving from eating any and everything to a plant-predominant diet. You begin that process of making transformation that when you move from eating any and everything to a plant-predominant diet, you begin to transform diabetes. I, I, I looked at a nurse who was there inside the office, and this nurse kind of said to me, he said, hey, doc, I'll do whatever your plan is. Because someone told me, they said, one of the nurses came and said, hey, 50 bucks, and I'll put you on this plan with this trainer, and we're going to get you guys losing weight. And I said, I'll take anyone who wants to lose weight, and you come with me for the same period of time, and we'll compare, see who loses more weight. I had a team of about three, four people. This guy was on it. I should have put his picture up here. Incredible changes in three months. Diabetes, gone. <laughs> Blood pressure, gone. All these things, gone. Phenomenal outcomes that were there just by making a lifestyle change that he's been able to sustain. Powerful. High blood pressure decreases, right? Can decrease. We know that cholesterol, a marker for, for heart disease, decreases. Here's the key thing. I love Bruce Lee my hero growing up. So he's trying to do karate, although I never took any lessons, right? And, uh, you know, and wonderful philosophical guy, and he said one thing that's so powerful, he said, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. We all say, I know what I need to do. Why right? you say I hear they're telling you, okay, you gotta make sure you get your, your packets out or your contracts out. You're like, I know what to do. Of course, everyone knows I need to get my contract out. <laughs> no one gets signed up. We must apply. Willing is signed up. You have to do it. Right? You have to do it every single day. And so, what's the, the plan? What's the way? We have to, we want long, not just longevity, we want true longevity. What is true longevity? We want to have a lengthy life with our family. It's not about the length of life we live, it's about enjoying the time we have. Can I enjoy it with my family? Can I enjoy it with my colleagues? Because you're going to spend more time with these people than you spend with your family. Am I getting enough sleep? Am I sleeping seven to nine hours, or am I stressing out? Right? Am I am I kind of laughing more than I'm I'm I'm, I'm upset? All right? Am I smiling more than I'm frowning? What are those things that I'm putting into my body? Am I being positive or being negative? Am I choosing to walk? Is there a staircase here? Yes. Do I walk up and down the stairs instead of the elevator? Right? <laughs> You say, I don't have time to get to the gym. Well, when you come here, you can walk up the stairs. You say, well, I got bad knees. Okay, well, fine. Walk up one flight, then take the elevator the next flight. Can I choose to park further away, or do you drive around and circle the parking lot? This is where you make fun of Do you track your steps? I know everyone has a smartphone here. No one on earth that doesn't have a smartphone. So it has step counts on there. Do you track your steps? How many steps are you getting in on a daily basis? So what we want to do is we want to have... So what's that? 10,000. All right, I love it. I love it. So if you're getting 10,000 with in your sleep, go for 20,000. Push it. Every day, make, make uh, avenues to improve. Be that new person. Be that person that you always wanted to be, that example of who you want to be. So how are we going to do this? Start each meal with a salad. Simple. Not ranch soup with a few pieces of lemon. <laughs> right? Not a salad with a of soup. <laughs> Some soup, right? Not Campbell's, not with, with like 5,000 milligrams of sodium inside it. But why not go ahead and have some fresh, before I eat my stuff, we don't focus on what we can't eat, focus on what you can eat. Download the app, right? Daily Dozen. 
So before you get anything, just say, I'm gonna go through this, check mark. Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna get my beans in, get my, then you can have all the pizza, you can have all the carnitas, you can have whatever it is you want, right? But you get that stuff in first. Get that stuff in first that's gonna be, are you feeding the good guys or feeding the bad guys? That's going to be the key. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna try and get in the vegetables. We're gonna get in the beans legumes. We're gonna get in the fresh fruits, the berries, right? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have our starchy vegetables because carbohydrates are not bad, garbage is bad. What's the difference? Potatoes are carbohydrates, potato chips are garbage. See what I mean? That's where we have to go. We're going to go ahead and have these things. We're going to go ahead and make a, a say, okay, I'll try the switch. You told me about dairy, you convinced me. I don't want to die suddenly of this stuff. Okay, I'll try an almond or a rice or this or that milk, and I'll use that for some of my creamer or my cereal or whatever it may be. I want to blow up and let's be the bomb. G-bomb, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. You want to get that incorporated in your body and have it on a, on a, on a daily basis is what you want to do. I was told I had 20 minutes. <laughs> Did I get it in 20 minutes? Yeah. 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 20 minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, is there any uh, connection to sugar intake or oh. heart disease? Oh, yeah. Thanks for asking. That. It's a great one. So let me tell you. The Eagle Trinity, <coughs> fats all sugar. Sugar is one of them. What says King, uh, Journal of American Medical Association, about three years ago, came out with an article showing that with added sugar, Right, that we increase our risk of heart-related disease. So it's not so much sugar. We think of sugar and we make it ubiquitous. Fruit, people say, oh, that's sugar. Don't eat it. Sugar, that's bound up inside of a package. It's rip, rip, It's intertwined and it's rich with fiber. When that happens, your body has to go through a process to unravel it. So it doesn't cause the same ill effects like when you have processed sugar, sugar excuse me, refined uh, granulated sugar. But we always say this, oh, I don't eat sugar. I'm having maple syrup. Uh, I don't eat sugar. I'm having beet. I'm having beet sugar. Your body's gonna see all that sugar. If your if we have aliens coming in here and taking a look at us, and they're saying we're gonna zap up all the humans inside of KW, right? Guess what they're getting? All of us, even though we all look different. That's like the sugars, different names. If it ends in O S E, OS, it's gonna have a sugar. If it's the part of the first three ingredients, you gotta read the way to hide everything. Is to is to hide and write. Read your labels. Four grams equals one teaspoon. So when you sit there and you're drinking whatever you're drinking, it has 20 grams of sugar in it. That's five teaspoons right there. Then they trick you by doing fancy math, and you have to look at the serving size. It's crazy. What about alcohol? Mm -hmm. Good one, Bill. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that's asking for, for that's a great, that's a great question. So I always describe things as is it health promoting or disease forming? So there's a lot of dispute when it comes to alcohol. There's some suggestion about cancer formation, right? Breast cancer, other cancers with alcohol ingestion. We know the, the impact on the liver. We know that when they refer to alcohol ingestion, we speak in terms of red wine, everyone's like, I have my red wine. Six ounces. Not a bottle, not a well, not a 14 or anything else. So we talk about empty calories. We talk about unnecessary calories. You say, well, it has that resveratrol. It's good for you, right? Yeah, the same stuff that's inside your grapes, same stuff that's inside your nuts that you can get, the same stuff that's all there that you can get from whole food plant foods. So I tell folks, don't start drinking for purposes of your health. If you do drink, you want to make it most, the, the, the association between alcohol, I believe, this is my own impression, so it's not factual. I'd like to separate that. I believe it's socialization about bonding and people go and they have a good time and they're relaxing and sitting down there. I can sit down and relax and have a good time with folks without drinking alcohol. Right. I don't have to have that. So I'm getting that back, that positive energy, that same beneficial effects without that. Um, so I don't want to tell you, no, it's absolutely wrong, but don't definitely do not start for purposes of your health. And if you drink, be very, 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 I'm not going to say moderate, I hate that word moderate, but be very mindful, right? that yes, I'm gonna have more than the recommended amount, so this can cause X, Y, and Z to me. I'm gonna have it, and I realize this, I, I'm gonna pay it downstream, right? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna continue to charge on that credit card, even though I know I'm gonna have to pay the bill later on. That doesn't make sense. It may, doesn't make sense if you don't go get a checkup at your doctor. That's like going ahead and continue to use your check card, debit card, not looking to see if you have the, the money in your account to cover it. 
Yes, ma'am. Dr. Batiste is my cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> Six years, and thank you. I haven't had another heart attack, so thank you so much for that. And um, when he told me, you're gonna Latina going, uh, no meat, no dairy, no eggs, so I said, how do I extend my life? He said, he introduced me to plant-based diet, and then I said, how about wine? And he said, eat grapes, you get the same benefit. <laughs> 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 right, so then, um, but, um, Dr. Batiste, you gave me a one-page sheet with, like, with the homework. Like, um, is that something you can share with Rob to share with yeah, everybody? Absolutely. Yeah, like it, it, it says, it says like what videos to watch, what books to read, and what websites to go to. And after I, I did that homework, it's it really it's eye opening and life changing. So you can share that with everybody. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. Any other questions? Wow. Awesome stuff, right? We need yeah. to take care of ourselves, guys. Right? Because we can't take care of our families if we don't take care of our bodies. Right? So it's it's awesome, and we'll make sure that we don't see you. All right. <laughs>